God created marriage. And the funny thing is, when you get into a relationship with him, he, he, it's like you're in a marriage with him. Now, I started to learn, like, like, yo, like, he's consistently telling me, come to him, come to him, think of him, think of him, die to myself for him, do this for him, love him. But he's also, at the very time that he's telling me to do these things, he's also telling me. YouTube, what up? It's your boy, Rudy, and I'm back with another video today we speaking about are you marriage minded or are you single minded that's right think about it take some time to think about it are you marriage minded or are you single minded take some time now reason why i'm asking is because i had to ask myself this right i know a lot of us quick to say i'm marriage minded i'm marriage minded but at the end of the day you consistently keep saying i'm independent i'm independent i do what i want to do don't nobody tell me what to do I do what I want to do. Can nobody tell me anything? And we don't, you know, we, we tend to think it's about me. It's not always about them. It's about me. How can you be marriage minded if you consistently keep saying it's about me? I do what I want to do. I'm independent. <laughs> think about it, right? Think about that. If you are marriage minded, how... Can I really be marriage minded if I'm always thinking about myself? Because in a marriage, aren't you supposed to be thinking about someone else? Right? And I know you over there like, well, yeah, but, 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 but this is the point. I had to think about this. And when it came to my relationship with God, it's so crazy how when I got into this relationship with him, he, he kind of switched that mindset a little bit, right? Now, I want you to take some time to really think about what I'm saying in this video. Really think about this, right? Especially if you got a relationship with God. But if you don't, just keep watching. Keep watching and take a listen, man. And, and also pray. I want you to pray after this video, too, and ask God to reveal it to you. But at the end of the day, I got closer to God. And I'm like, yo, God is mad selfless. Right? Think about it. Jesus came and died for you. And I know you're over there like, well, that's Jesus. Yeah, it is Jesus. But I also remember him telling me to do what he did. He didn't say, I just came to do this for you. He said, no, I came to do this so you can follow what I did. I'm trying to show you what to do. I'm trying to show you what love is. I'm showing you this love, but then I want you to show others what this love is. They need to see me inside of you. This is what he said to us. They need to see him inside of us. Now, think about this. God created marriage. And the funny thing is, when you get into a relationship with him, he, he, it's like you're in a marriage with him. Now, I started to learn like, like, yo, like, he's consistently telling me, come to him, come to him, think of him, think of him, die to myself for him, do this for him, love him. But he's also at the very time that he's telling me to do these things, he's also telling me, do it for them. Think about them. Be kind to them, forgive them, love them, even if they do the worst to you. Even if they ask for this, give them more, right? When, when you're away from him, he wants you to think about him. This is the funny thing I learned, right? Like, God, God wants us to do what is right in his eyes. He wants us to think about him. He teaches us that by what he does for us. Jesus came and he took a pain for us. He took the pain and he took the blame for us. He was in a covenant with us. He was showing us how to be one, right? And I also want you to understand the Trinity. The Trinity is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's three that became one, right? Now, I want to speak on this independence thing. When we're in our single season, matter of fact, just in general, but in our single season, the world consistently tells us, be independent, be independent, be independent. You could do it on your own. You don't need nobody. You need yourself. Blah, 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 right? Consistently. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't even try to fight it. Y'all know it's the truth. But guess what? God doesn't tell me, think about yourself. The world says, think about yourself. The world says, let them do that. The world says something's wrong with them. You don't need to help them. It's on them. God says, go help them. God says, go love them. God says, protect them. Give. 
He even says to take the blame too. And I know this is hard to hear, right? I know this is hard to hear, but this is just what the truth is, right? Are you marriage minded or are you single minded? Is your mind always um, independent? Because I, I actually see God saying to be interdependent. And y'all know, I, some of y'all are like, what? What is interdependent? It's probably the first time y'all even hearing this, right? I suggest Googling interdependence, but I'm going to go ahead and put the definition up too and explain it. So interdependence is dependence of two or more people or things on each other. Basically being dependent upon one another, being dependent upon one another, right? That means helping, right? That means being there for each other. When you look in the Bible, Jesus sent the disciples out in twos to help each other, not in one. There's also another scripture in Ecclesiastes 4.12 that says, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. A cord of three strands represents God, the groom, and the bride, right? That's three, right? Braiding these three strands symbolizes the joining of one man, one woman, and God in marriage. That means we need each other. That's what God is trying to tell us, right? The society and the world consistently says you don't need them. You don't need them. But think about it. We do need each other, man. Men need women. Women need men. We need each other for families, right? Look at all the broken families when we're not together. But look, there is more families who are stronger when they stay together. Why is that? Because God created it to be that way. We're stronger with him. Think about it. You crying out. We're crying out. We're screaming. We're we're, we're, we have an anxiety. We have a depression. We can't do nothing. We don't know what to do when we're going through all these struggles. But then guess what we do? We start crying out to God. Why is that? Because we can't do it independently. We need him. We need someone else to help us. Right? God said it's not good for man to be alone. You think he wasn't just talking about males. He said, man, he's not, he's talking about human. Man and woman, man, two. He made two to help, to strengthen, to love, to heal, to nourish, to nurture. We need each other, man. When we're in our single season, we can truly learn how to be marriage minded, right? God actually teaches us this. But we got to actually focus on what he's saying. This is why I'm asking, are you marriage minded? Or are you single minded? The world consistently tells us to be independent. And I want you all to know the more independent you are or the more you try to stay this super independent person, the more selfish you will be, the more selfish you will be. But the more interdependent that you are, the more selfless you will be, the more like Jesus you will be. Because Jesus ain't saying, no, I could do this on my own. I ain't, I ain't need y'all. Remember, he came as a human in flesh on this earth to teach us how to be. He is love. He created it. God created marriage. He knows what it needs. And it doesn't need independence. It needs interdependence. We need to depend on each other. He created marriage. And during our single season, he's trying to teach us how to be in a marriage. All we have to do is follow what he does, right? During our single season, he's teaching us how to be in a marriage. The more he says, give to him, the more he says, think about him, the more he's teaching me to do the very same thing for someone else, right? Rudy, apologize. Rudy, think about how that can affect them. Rudy, what can you do for that person? And some people might be like, well, that's going to stress me out. Look, I want y'all to understand that might seem like that, but you know what happens? When you actually do for others, you actually internally feel better because the focus is not on you. And I know it might be hard to believe, but again, the more you focus on yourself, actually, the more stressed you're going to be. You're like, what? Trust what I'm telling you. The more focus you are on yourself, the more you think about what you don't have, the more you think about how you feel, the more you think about what's happening to you all the time. You keep focusing on you. How can you not how can you not be stressed if you keep thinking about what's happening and what's not happening to yourself? But what if the focus is off you? What if the focus is off of you? How could you be stressed like that if you're not even thinking about you? Think about it. 
right? Even if you research this, this is the truth, right? They say when someone is stressed and they keep thinking, how can I not be stressed? You actually become more stressed. But they also say when you refocus your mind off of yourself, that helps relieve the stress because you're not thinking so solely about you. You're thinking about something else. Your focus is something else. This is why the disciples needed to be focused on Jesus in that storm rather than what they were in. Their focus had to be off of themselves so that they can focus on someone else. This is what Jesus does for us. He's teaching us how to love others. Loving someone else is being a servant. God wants us to be his servants, right? And the Bible says to be first, you have to be last. The Bible says to be first, you have to be last. The Bible says to give to others, to think of others. It's teaching you how to be marriage minded. The more you are in a relationship with God, the more you consistently think of him, he's teaching you how to be in a marriage when you are single so that you don't go into a marriage with a single mind. But see, the world don't want us to know that. The world is teaching us how to be single, how to be single in a marriage. So we got to ask ourselves, am I marriage minded or am I single minded, right? Am I single minded or am I marriage minded? Am I being selfish or am I more selfless, right? And the best way to become more marriage minded is to stay connected to God and to stay into this relationship with God to become more like him, to follow him day in and day out. Learn more. Look at ourselves. Think of how can I be a servant? How can I give to others? What do I need to do for someone else? Because that is the mindset that Jesus had. His mindset is how can I give? What do they need? Not what do I want? What didn't they give to me? Why do I keep feeling? Why they, well, why they won't do this for me? That's not the mindset. That's a single-minded person. And you don't want to go into a marriage with a single mind because that ruins relationships and that causes divorces. We need to understand God created marriage. He knows what is good for it. 